as I said, we used to have training data, uh, input data for the supervised uh, re uh, reinforcement learning. And we used in typical uh, experiments, we used to have, first thing, you need to capture the data. You must need to have a data for the training. And it need to be from few hundred images to a uh, few hundred rows of data. It does not need to be only for images. It can be applied anywhere. And for even security threat analysis and these sort of things. So you need to have labeled data. And when you have to do the experiments, you need to divide the data into two parts for the research perspective. Training part and testing part. Normally, typical, they used to have like 80% uh, for the training, 20% for the testing. Some, uh, in some algorithm, they use different also, like 60%, 50% also. And in the training data, you, you further use to divide it into train data and validate data. Train data will be actual doing the training and validation. For each iteration, you will use some percentage, again 20% of the training data will be used for the validation to improve the training process. So each time, each iteration, you will use 20% data to see how much accurate accuracy we got. I will show you in the experiments also. And if you are getting high, you will stop at a specific level. And then if you are getting less, you will say, OK, you need more iterations. You need more uh, optimized parameters. You need more layers. So based on that, you will decide the uh, system to take the decision. And when you, are, you achieve enough, uh, your goal like 95% accuracy or whatever your goal is, then you will do the training. And you will test the the trained model on the tra uh, testing data to see how much actually you are getting the accuracy. Uh, then you can apply a separate, totally independent image or uh, data to see is it giving correct input output or not. There are three terms we used, underfitting, normal fitting, and overfitting in machine learning. Underfitting means you are, your training is not done correctly, like high training error. And solution is add more features, are do more uh, training. In nor normal fitting, you used to get almost optimized results. If that's OK. And in overfitting, it means like you train the model actually more. So uh, high testing error, where you will get the testing error will be good. But when you will uh, like produce the results based on the uh, uh, testing, uh, in validation, you will get very high results. But in testing, you will get very low results. And the solution is you need to have more data for this case. Okay. Now I will go for more details about uh, machine learning, deep learning. But because it is only two hours session, I cannot cover all the algorithms or much of the mathematical or technical details. But I will just give you the overview, and then we will move on to the next step of uh, demos. Machine learning, deep learning, actually, like uh, in last three, four years, deep learning is everywhere. Not even four years. It's around six, seven years, actually. So deep learning is everywhere. Why? Uh, the main in first thing, deep learning, you don't need to extract the features by your own. The system will, uh, the algorithm will extract the features by your own. So you will just give the input data labeled, and you will get the results without worrying about handicrafted features and uh, playing with that. System will learn the features by itself. It will extract itself, and then it will generate the results. Um, like uh, output. Deep learning means using neural networks with uh, several layers of node between input and output. Uh, in neural networks, actually, it works based on the brain activity of learning concept. So they apply uh, neural networks. But in input and output layer, you can have several, like sometime might be like 20 layers, 100 layers, 50 layers, or so on. It depends upon. What, how much complex data are the application you are focusing? The series of layers between input and output do feature identification processing in a series of stages, just as our brain seems to do. And multi-layer neural networks have been around for, like multi-layer uh, like neural networks have been around since 25 years. But what is the issue, or why no deep learning get popular? At that time, we were not having, like 25 years ago or 30 years ago, we were not having that much powerful machines. We were not having the concept of GPUs. So that's the reason why we have now, like in deep learning, you need to have really very 
uh, in intensive uh, processing power. Even in example, I will show you when I will like, run it that how it, uh, like slow it is. Uh, typical neural network algorithm for learning the weights in network with one hidden layer, but not good at learning the weights on networks with more hidden layers in deep learning. So we need to optimize this issue also. Deep, uh, deep learning algorithm work by making thousands and thousands of tiny adjustments that we use to call the parameter adjustments or weights, uh, each making the network do better at the most recent pattern. So typical machine learning, you have input image or input data you use to extract the features, uh, extract the features manually, and then you apply classification and you will find the result it has, it is a car or no for this example. In deep learning, this uh, feature extraction part will be skipped. You will just apply the deep learning algorithm which will do the extraction and classification at the same time and then you will apply it and you will get the results. Uh, in deep learning, for image processing, we have most common like uh, typical uh, algorithm that is known as convolutional neural networks. Uh, it is actually based on the neurobiological motivation. It has motivation for that. And over here, actually it is a special kind of multi-layer ne neural network which is based on feed-forward and uh, um, back-propagation algorithm. They are in, like, if you will do in advanced uh, AI or machine learning course, you will learn about this. So, and over here you used to have actually so many layers, thousands or hundreds of thousands of parameters in, machine, in deep learning or CNN models, which will learn the features by its own and it will take the decision or predict the thing, things. Okay, so we are done with the first part that was about the overview of machine learning, importance of the machine learning, applications of machine learning. Now I will go for, for the specific examples, two examples as I said, one is handwritten numeral recognition, uh, we worked uh, in the last two, three years, and other one is brain tumor classification. These two examples I will cover. So in the first example, any questions so far? Because I am speaking, speaking. Any question? No at all? No? Okay. So in the first example, as I said, that is about uh, uh, handwritten numeral recognition and as I said, whenever you have to apply machine learning, you need to have data set. If the data set is available online, okay, you can use it to improve the results and see how much accuracy you will get with the different yeah, machine learning algorithms or with some changes in the algorithms you can get enhanced algorithm, uh, enhanced results and you can say okay this is a better technique with better parameters okay this is your publication or this is your uh, improved enhanced algorithm while if the data set is not available you can build new data set as some of the students in senior design projects they are working to build their own data sets even for numerous recognition we uh, made our own data set in two years back for, uh, it was very short database. Uh, although we were having English uh, numerous data set available online, some Arabic also, but we want to create our own database. So we uh, created a simple small data set of around 5,070 numerous hand handwritten digits. We asked to the student to fill out the forms and then we extracted those digits and then we prepared the, the data set for that. So, and that is done by the PMU students, we have of uh, them. And now in this one, we have the data, we label the data, how we label, I will show you just quickly. It is, uh, there are a couple of ways, like you can make Excel sheet where you can give the image name and the label, like okay, this image is actually representing zero or one or two, or so on, but this is the way of labeling. If for any other numerical data, you can do the same strategy. Uh, over here, I can show you. For example, uh, we did automation for this process. We applied some uh, segmentation algorithm to extract the numerals. So you can see we store those numbers in, in one folder and given the name one. So actually whenever the data will be read from this folder, it means like its label will be one. In the same way, if we are reading the data in the MATLAB or Python from uh, folder three, it will be labeled as three. So the labeling is done like a uh, sort of automated, automated. So you can see we have this data. This is the handwritten data for Arabic numerals from zero to nine. 
and we want to recognize these things uh, that any object we will give as an input, we want to see that uh, uh, like it will system will learn automatically by itself. We will not if we will not train the system. System cannot recognize for them everything is zeros and ones. How system can predict oh this is one or this is seven? So we need to do the training. So we label the data. We extracted the data. We uh, we got the data from the farm. Then we extracted and we got this one. Okay. Now. First, I will discuss about the feature-based method, like where uh, the typical uh, machine learning algorithm, which is based on the handicraft features. Now, if we will see, as I said, when we are going to recognize the face of a typical way, how we used to recognize, we used to see the face color and these things. Now, if we need to recognize these numerals, if you see this is like example of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, how we can recognize, how our brain is processing that? Based on the shape, okay. Now, how we can see the shape is like this and uh, like different uh, like ways of shape representation. If we will see over here, one is like straight line, sort of straight line. Two is in different shape, and so on. So, actually, we propose a method to extract the features based on the shape. So, if we will see over there in this image that is uh, representing a right? Yeah, rabbit head. No. We will divide this image into three rows, like equal distribution, and we will see the starting point of the first uh, like part. What is the starting point and what is the ending point? Just the pixel value or the location, x-axis location. So over here might be it is if it, the image is 16 by 16, might be this point is around like uh, uh, 8, and this one will be 12, right? 8 to 12 by 4. No, starting point 8. Ending point, 12. In the same way, if we will have this image now, that is actually 7. So over here, the shape is, what will be the starting point if we will apply the same method, this one, first one? It will be like 1 or 2, and the ending point will be 12 or 14. So it is giving a difference to feel out, like 7 is actually very like close or narrow difference, and, uh, and 8 has a large difference might be in some images like zero we will not get any any point zero we will get zero zero values in the same way middle one we will have different point last one different points in x-axis in the same way if we will go for the y-axis we will see the starting point over here it is very small but it is at the top middle one at the bottom again the last one in y-axis it is at the top so this is again like you can consider the starting point, ending point as a feature. In the same way, if we will divide the whole image into 60, uh, into four by four matrix, four, 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 uh, four uh, like four rows and four columns, and then we try to see how many black pixels. This is black and white images. So how many black pixels we have, and based on that we will also consider it each box as a uh, as a feature, and then we let the system learn on this, based on this one. Now, if you will see over here, how many black pixels we have? Zero, right? In this part, zero. In this part, zero, zero. Over here, how many? A lot. Okay. If you will apply the same, this four by four uh, like uh, thing over here, at the start, you will get some black pixels, right? So it will actually zero versus some values. It will create a difference to to actually make the decision. Same way. If we will measure the distance, okay, over here we will just get the values from starting and ending, and then we will learn, get the values, starting point and ending point, how much distance we have, how many pixels we have. So that will also be another feature. So in the same way, for every part, you can have uh, like distance and consider it as a feature for the x-axis, y-axis, and then in the last step, if you will see how many diagonal values are. Uh, 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 height distance to width distance ratio. What is the like uh, the val uh, ratio value or spec ratio? You can measure that one also and consider it as a uh, as a feature. Now, and another feature can be like how many total black pixels in the whole image. For example, in zero you will have only few, while in the like in this four you will have a, a lot you know, like a lot more. So this is the way how you can extract the features for any um, application. Now. 
you got like from here like 22 or 38 features. Can you use the same features for, uh, for example, for the uh, recognition of face? No. So that's what I said like at the start. The handicrafted features, they are good for application dependent. But why we are still using or why people use the uh, typical classifications in, as compared to, to the deep learning? Because like deep learning, you need to have a lot of processing power, you need to have very large amount of data, while in typical uh, algorithms, classification algorithm, you don't need to have large amount of data, you don't need to have large of processing power. So we got the features. Now I will show you the code for this one and I will run it and I will show you how we did it. <coughs> 